So my name is Alexander Kernbaum. I'm with SRI International, and we're showing off our new transmission. We call it Inception Drive, and it's an infinitely variable transmission. And what that means in practice is that the input motor can always be spinning in one direction, say clockwise, and the output can be spinning either clockwise or counterclockwise. And the output can shift backwards and forwards uh, without any clutches, uh, without any discrete changes in the system. It can do this very smoothly. So we have the input shaft here and the output shaft there. And as I rotate this collar on the outside, I can shift the gear ratio. So the input velocity is staying the same, but the output just slowed down. If I keep on twisting, it'll slow down more and then eventually actually do a full reversal. So the first step is to take a look at a conventional continuously variable transmission, which I have a model of right here. And so you have a few key components. You have what you call a, a V-belt, which means if you take a cross-sectional area through the belt, it would be a V-shape. And you have two conical pulleys. And what happens is if you squeeze these pulleys together, the V-belt is extruded out to a larger diameter. And so as a result, you can change the ratio between these two. And so the first thing we did was that we rearranged those components and I f we fixed one pulley to ground. So this pulley I'm going to keep from rotating. I'm going to hold it in my hand right here. I'm going to make the input this orbiting motion. I'm going to make this, and th this is essentially what the input is. What happens is that I've turned this one-to-one -one ratio into, in fact, it's a, what we call an infinite ratio, which is where the infinitely variable name comes from. No matter how much I rotate my left hand here, this arrow is always going to point up. If one pulley is slightly larger than the other, it'll cause it to rotate in one direction, and if you switch which one's larger, it'll rotate in the other direction. But what we finally figured out how to do was that we could place one pulley entirely inside the other one. That's why we, we call it a nested pulley configuration. And so what we have here are the, is the nested pulley configuration. And so the outer pulley, one of the pulleys, is right here. Here's one, one half of it, and here's the other half as well right there. Okay? And the inner pulley is right here. Okay, and it's got this big black line on it right there. And what you can see is happening is that the inner pulley is effectively, it's lifting the belt off of the outer pulley from the inside. The really neat thing about this is that you can have the inner pulley or the outer pulley have a larger effective diameter. So even though the inner pulley is physically smaller than the outer pulley, it doesn't stop it from acting like a bigger pulley, essentially. And that allows you to do the full reversal that you can see in the inception drive. The very first one we made, we could only change the transmission ratio by a, twisting a screwdriver, like so. Whereas this one here has a nice, convenient way of changing the ratio where you simply rotate this collar, essentially. And so you can imagine, in an actual robotic platform, what you'd have is one primary drive motor and a much, much smaller secondary motor that then controls the transmission ratio. If you can put an infinitely variable transmission in a robot, you can have uh, significant energy savings, especially for cyclic tasks where you're moving back and forth like that. You can also do some really neat tricks where perhaps you have one drive motor and then multiple degrees of freedom that are being coupled through variable transmissions. So we think this transmission can make a big difference for mobile robots where energy efficiency is key. That might be a walking robot or it could possibly even just be a mobile robotic base or a platform or something like that. We also think this, energy, this transmission can make a big impact where human interaction is very important as well uh, because we think there's an opportunity to make uh, robotic platforms much more safe by adjusting the transmission ratio so that humans can interact with the robot.